When you first met Dad, when was that? And what were your first impression? Well, at first I don't remember when it was, because I met him so many times, it was sort of a normal way of life. In 72, 73 ish, I'd imagine. Ah, yes, it was. He was a, a special person, it's simple as that. You can't say, well, yes, he was like, if you like Prost or like Sam Horry, he, he, was, he was different. You can't get people to act like, that, no, like no. him because it just come natural to him. It wasn't, he wasn't acting. He just did what he did and it happened to be the right things. What do you think he would think of F1 today? Your dad wouldn't fit in. No, <laughs> it certainly wouldn't. <laughs> no, definitely not. I don't know if you remember the documentary when Playboys ruled the world about dad and Barry and had that chap from, I can't remember what, he was the editor of some newspaper and he was saying how such a shame it is. And there's me thinking, well, it's people like you, it's your fault that they're like this because the, the media can't be trusted to be respectful any longer. Yeah. And as a result, the drivers of all athletes have got to keep quiet and then you lose personality. And even the media today um, act in a completely different way to what they used to act. Mm. They used to be able to write what they thought. And now I think most of them write what they're told. For you, what's been the most exciting era of F1, the best that if you had to choose a decade? It, those days when your dad was around racing, yeah. by far, far, far. And it's a great shame that the people today, the public, and uh, the people that are currently involved in Formula One wasn't around those days mm. to see the big differences. And the, the problem is with the broadcasters and people today don't want to show this so much, is because people will compare them to today mm. and maybe not watch today. Well, uh, personality aside, if he was um, gagged and handcuffed, how do you think you'd do in a racing car in today's Grand Prix driving, if he was at his, in his peak? It just wouldn't fit in, full stop. He wouldn't react in a nice way to silly regulations and silly instructions and things. Mm. With these drivers, if they do something which perhaps the team owners or a sponsor doesn't suit them, you know, they get a slap, don't do that anymore. Mm. Now, nobody would do that to your dad. <laughs> <laughs> because nobody did those things anyway, and it wouldn't, with, particularly with him, it wouldn't have made any difference. He would have done the same thing the next day. All these silly things they do today, penalties for this and penalties, that's stupid. When I said a little while ago, when I was involved, technical regulations, and, even, and more important, the sporting regulations, they should have written across the top, don't race. You know. Yeah because that's what it all amounts to. All the regulations that are there are to stop people racing. Mm. But when you're driving, you don't ever think of an accident. No. You think other people can have one. Yeah. You know, when I was driving, I was happy when somebody had, they were in front of me, had an accident. It's one more out of the way. Exactly. <laughs> the world has changed. Mm. What about the future of F1? Where do you think it might go in the next five, 10, 15 years? What does it really rely on? Formula One. You need to have the support of the public to watch television, mm -hmm. and therefore the TV companies will pay for the rights. Yep. It needs for promoters to be able to promote the event in a way that will attract the public. Really, all types of sports have changed from the 80s. I mean, those days, really the most important thing wasn't the finance. It was really to do a good job. Mm. All the race drivers, I mean, you, your dad in particular, are personalities. And people want to be involved and see personalities. And today, the, the drivers can't be that. I mean, with Lewis even, although he's sort of a bit more free, he's still very limited to what he can do. Who do you think's the best driver on the grid now? Secondly, who's been the best driver overall and why? Well, I mean, I suppose you'd have to say the best driver on the grid today is the guy that's won more races. Lewis. Um, but I mean, both... Uh, well, we don't know how good Fernando Alonso is today. What would he be like if he was driving Lewis's car? Yeah, exactly. In fact, there's one or two other guys that you'd say, what would they be like in Lewis's car? I think Max Verstappen might be one of the most talented yeah. drivers we've ever seen, ever. 100% he would be a world champion. Mm. He's not as flamboyant as colourful as your dad was, but it at least is a bit more open than the others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's got an opinion. This is the trouble with these things, you see. People that are racing anything a little bit below Formula One never get the 
recognition and credit they mm. deserve. Indeed, yeah. So I, I've always thought that the, the, the 22 on the, on, the, on the Grand Prix grid aren't the best 22 in the world. Absolutely. Miss World isn't the best looking girl in the world. No. no. It just happens to be yeah. an opportunity. Mm, right place, right time, right checkbook. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Greatest driver of all time? Very, very difficult. Depends on when and what car they had and what support they had. And I think if you said to me, well, you've got to answer the question, uh, I'd say Prost. Prost, really? Interesting. Because he had competition in the team. He never had a lot of help. And, you know, when the lights went out, he was on his own and he was racing. Today, these guys are getting so much information mm. that they don't have to think. I tell you the good thing that, that happened for James, really, was the guy that he was with, was Alexander Hesketh, also a character. So they got up to all sorts of mischief together and didn't give a damn for anybody and just got on with what they thought the right thing to do was. And that's what helped him and made him, I think it made him confident. So what was he like to be around at a Grand Prix? You know, obviously, I imagine before the race he was very tense and very focused. He was confident enough to know he could succeed and do whatever he was doing. And I think that's, so he made him much more relaxed. Did you or anyone else think that he was going to turn into something special? You could see that he, his intentions were to win. Yeah. yeah. And that's all you need. He was very when you get a guy that's prepared to do that without any question marks, mm. you've got to know he's going to get the job done.